Hi, I'm Patrick, and in this video, I'll be talking about using RTL SDR to decode ISM 433 MHz messages that are used by regular utility devices like remote controls for garages, doorbells, or fans. I also give an overview of how more complex messages can be decoded, like the communication protocol used by aircrafts, ADSB. But before I will go into more details, if you like my content, please give it a like and subscribe. Thanks. In the last video, I mentioned it would be possible to compile project RTL433 from C to JavaScript with WASM. If we think about the work a little bit more, the conversion comes with pros and cons. The pros are Logic is kept one-to-one -one and can be updated with the main library updates. Adapters are usually small and relate only with I.O., which for the considered library is well interfaced. Cons are hard if not impossible if you want to extend the logic to, for example, provide supportive visualizations. You need to keep the original I.O. interface. Additional libraries are needed to be compiled, which may be hard or impossible to port. Because I want to add additional visualizations to show the coded messages, and it's not that complicated to perform ISM signal decoding, I think it's fine to re-implement the logic. For the decoding, I used a radio receiver project that had a logic that connects to RTL SDR that includes just recently an upgraded version of the logic to support version 4 of the device. It was quite easy to change it and adapt code from a library that provides ADSB decoding to use it for the decoding. Once the decoding was done, it gave me a good understanding of how RTL SDR compares with TinySA Ultra in terms of data capture capabilities. Each sample of data encompasses 128,000 data points, which represent frequency data for 50 milliseconds which is 2,560,000 samples per second, about three orders of magnitude lower than an average oscilloscope can sample, but we are talking about a device that is an order of magnitude cheaper than a reasonable oscilloscope, cheaper options coming with 1 to 2 giga samples per second. For frequencies lower than 500 MHz, it's more than enough so we can even average 128 points, which gives us 1000 points for a span of 50 milliseconds. For comparison to TinySA Ultra, a sweep window only gives 450 points, which potentially can contain spurs. It gives us more opportunities to acquire more reliable data than TinySA Ultra, as well as decode longer data chunks, as the logic is continuously fetching data from RTL SDR. The JavaScript logic is implemented as two buffers, where one is being used to provide data for the decoding logic, and another one is waiting for the device to fill a sample buffer, to ensure we get constant stream of data. The logic for ISM data decoding is the same as the one used for TinySA Ultra, so not a lot of new code was added. Let's see now how the newly added device performs to decode a sample signal from a flipper zero that's placed next to the RTL SDR. We can see that the coding logic is activated once a whole batch consisting of several samples packet is collected. Interestingly, you can see that some of the messages are cropped. I don't know for sure why this is happening, but my guess would be flipper zero ways of working. The device even sends no signal after about 15 seconds, even though the signal diode is blinking, signaling sending data. To overcome errors when decoding data, it's good to download acquired data and run statistical analysis to see what message was most frequently received. In that way, it's possible to determine the transmitted signal with more certainty. As we can see, the most common value is the same as the one being sent, although multiple runs should be made to gain a strong confidence. As a bonus, here is a screenshot of the application fetching ADSB messages.
There are two main items that could be improved in the ISM protocol's decoding logic. Decode ISM messages in a continuous way rather than a batch of several messages. Automatically detect incoming messages. For now, I hardcoded that every bit is of a hardcoded length. That can be deducted from an incoming stream itself rather than defining it explicitly. I think it will be fun to work a bit more on decoding LoRa communication further on. There are some materials on the internet on how it can be done. The code is also quite interesting, as the encoding algorithm is quite obscure, as it happens with proprietary protocols, but I think I'll focus more on the tooling for LoRa as the protocol is gaining more popularity thanks to the projects like Meshtastic. Thanks for watching the video. Please like and subscribe to be informed when a new material is out. Thanks.